All right, we're almost there and we are slowing down, which is nice because we're coming to our apoapsis, which is gonna be the reason we kind of shoot back around. I'm gonna slow it down just a little bit, kind of not overshoot it. Oh, there we go. Okay, perfect. And this will put us into a pretty nice maneuver to get back to Kerbin. So let us go out of the moon here. Uh, in fact, we are going to get to our periapsis on the planet here. How much fuel do we have? I would risk a landing, but I'm not quite feeling it. Not not quite. You know, if I had a bit more fuel, maybe. So we're going to speed up time a little bit. And uh, that's pretty much as good as we're going to get. So what we're going to do uh, now that we are kind of, you know, we can kind of see Minmus. It looks like a I think of ice cream, actually, like mint chip. Uh, let us do this. So we are going to do these, the mystery goos. That's 40 signs per, which is nice, let's be honest. That's very nice. I do all of them. And then we are going to do our three science juniors, and hopefully these will all stack. That's 100. This is... 100 and this is 100 perfect now uh, do i want to no i really don't want to land this was a probe mission so that is what we are going to keep it as is a probe mission let's speed up time and we will wave goodbye to minmus don't worry we'll be there soon so we'll actually be able to see what the planet or moon rather is actually like so let's do this uh, we want to make our periapsis intersect with Kerbin. Pretty easy, so we're going to flip ourselves around here to retrograde, which this is something we've we've done many times now, so it's, it's nothing new. We're just going to burn until there. Now we're going to intersect the planet, and we'll speed up time. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you're doing this is while you're speeding up time, you're slowly getting faster and faster, so you're gonna you're gonna become uh, closer and closer to the planet. You gotta be really careful and keep an eye on not hitting the moon on your way back in. It's always a possibility. Okay, so we're kind of close, and what we're gonna do is do this. And I know I have all of these engines, but the first thing I'm going to do is actually uh, try to get the heck off of the engine. So I'm going to decouple this we're just gonna get rid of it as an entire piece right and it makes it makes a lot of sense to get rid of it now because it's a it's a heavier weight than what this is because it has all this fuel so it will either go flying by us or it will come in at a much faster trajectory and possibly hit us which we're hoping won't happen uh, but the other thing to do here is just kind of make sure that you're you're going it at the right angle. All of our parachutes look like they're intact, so we shouldn't have any issues with landing. We are going to turn on our lights because we don't know if we're going to hit the water or not. Uh, it looks like we might, so we want to be kind of uh, wary of that. Also, those engines, kind of scary, but let's speed up time and actually get burning into the atmosphere. Yeah, so as you see, the engines, because they're heavier than us, are going to come in at a much faster trajectory. So that was kind of to be expected. I don't think anybody's surprised about that. So let us slow down time. Uh, and now we will pull our chutes, which should slow us down quite a bit. But we don't want to flip that way. That's not what I wanted to do, game. That's not what I wanted to do. I wonder if it's because I have SAS on. It might be. No, nope, that made it worse. Let's let's pull you back around. Uh, I gotta watch the uh, the nav ball. It's actually pretty peaceful now that we've slowed down below a hundred meters. Just floating. It's kind of the nice part. This is like um, it's a very victorious feeling. 
when you're when you're coming in like this because you're like yes i had a successful mission everything's gone to plan but there's always the chance of everything exploding when you're coming back in so you always got to be wary of that but we're gonna have shoot soon perfect that couldn't have gone any better now let's speed this up and recover our vessel I guess I could uh, slow it down and get my gear out. <laughs> just because I can. Not that I need to, but just because I can. And... Without hitting the water too hard. There we go. Pretty easy mission. Pretty easy science. Which is what we wanted. Let's recover. That was a nice gentle landing. It's perfect. And now we're up to 249 science, which is very, very, very good. So we need to pick up some of the things that I said we would pick up. Uh, but we, it, it, we're we kind of in a weird spot. Do we need the solar panels? The, you know, we don't need those yet. What we do need is we definitely need that. So let's let's just look through these, make sure I'm not missing anything for things that I you know actually need. So far, it looks like I'm good to go ahead and get uh you know these you know the precision engineering stuff is actually really nice for making small landers but i don't really have a use for that as of right now so we'll pick this up because this has some of the rockomatic fuel stuff which is nice and then we have the option of getting a hmm do we want I think we should go with the docking clamps. And my reasoning behind that is it'll it'll allow us to get the fueling station quicker, but that's 160 science and we're missing one. Which is kind of killing us here, to be perfectly honest. Okay, I've decided after several minutes of staring at this to save for what I need, which is getting the docking clamps instead of buying, you know, one of these things back here, which is not something I necessarily need. So we need to get to Minmus. Now that we've done a flyby of Minmus and we've unlocked some things that we actually really need, now we need to get there. So let's go into our... Uh, first, we need a command pod. That should be the first thing that we get. Now we have all of these things, which is really nice. So uh, let's let's build a lander for Minmus, specifically for Minmus. Okay, so I think I'm gonna do something kind of different than what we've done in the past, which is I'm gonna make a large lander to Minmus. Uh, that should give us enough fuel to get back and be fine. The, the problem is that we're gonna be looking at having spent a lot of science to you know to get there and back and it's also gonna be quite difficult thankfully it is a moon but it is gonna be quite difficult to get back up to our our actual craft here so let's do this we're gonna take two science juniors uh, just to absorb as much of that science as we can we are going to do four of these and then the rest of you know all the science stuff will be there this entire thing is going to be a lander and we are going to do an asparagus system uh, along the outside here okay the asparagus is actually set up now what i need to do is set up the staging for breaking apart uh, the fuel tanks and we'll add engines and all that but let's let's do the staging as we go so we're not doing it all at once which can be kind of boring so let's do this one and then we'll do this one and just like we've done before we, that's not what i want i want to click on this thank you unclick all these and then that and then we'll just you know match match them up going clockwise okay just to be sure those two those two and then those two okay perfect uh now we need engines which we don't need super powerful engines but we are going to just have the standard ones here that we used in the last mission. They don't burn a lot of fuel and we have a lot of fuel available to us. Now what I'm gonna do is then add uh, nose cones, 
which seems kind of strange, but it'll help getting, you know, getting off the ground, right? Uh, we also want to make sure all these engines are set up in the right staging, and now they are. And now let's add everything else that we need for this lander, including parachutes. Standard parachute on top. And then we'll do two there. Then I'm going to do another two there and there. Which is, it can seem kind of strange to, you know, want to do it that way, but trust me, it works really well to have two extra parachutes there. So, uh, what we'll end up having is just this middle fuel tank when we're coming back into orbit. Now, to save on weight, uh, the reason why I'm doing it this way is to save on weight, because otherwise I would put landing gear on the Science Juniors and then go for it. But I can't be certain that I will have uh, the, you know, the science, or I will have the the necessary amount of uh, fuel to get there and back without cutting everything out that I possibly can that isn't needed as far as weight goes. And then the other thing I'm going to do is add two more, uh, like right there, which, oops, that should have given me two and only gave me one. I've got two, and then we'll do two more. There we go. That'll work. F uh, actually, that'll work quite well. And that leaves a space for the asparagus to get through. So that gives us a lot of stopping power as far as parachutes go. But now we need to make sure these are all in the correct staging. So far, so good. Awesome. Got those set up. Got that. Got those. Okay, so now what we are going to do is something that we haven't done before. Uh, we are going to add a larger asparagus system to the bottom than what we've used. However, what we want to do first is just make sure that these are all structurally sound by adding some supports. All right, got support beams. That's looking good. Uh, the last thing for this lander, because this is our lander, as we have said before, is to add landing gear uh the way i'm gonna actually do this is landing gear like that and landing gear like that now we have to make sure they're the same height otherwise that can cause issues as far as instability goes and then we want landing gear like so in the middle which means each landing gear is between an engine, so it's not going to clip. Perfect. Uh, that should help quite a bit for landing, because this, this entire thing is going to land on Minmus. So let's move this up and get ready for the second stage. But before we do that, because I almost totally forgot, was to add one of these for control, because we are, we're actually going to need that uh, quite a lot for, for controlling the craft in space. So here's what we do. We do a single decoupler, and then we do one of these, right? So we have this, like, all of a sudden this big thing is right in the center, but this is going to give us the necessary thrust. And I'll show you what I mean, because uh, we need to find the right fuel tanks, which are these. Now, I could go with a single fuel tank, but I'm going to go two, like so, and then our engine, like so. So that's kind of the way it's going to be set up, and then we are going to asparagus system. Okay, so what I've used is my radial decouplers, the ones that I typically like to use, and I've put those fuel tanks in, and then we will do two extra like so. So this is looking quite powerful, especially when we do this, which that is just a lot of thrust. This should get us into the atmosphere. This should get us to Minmus and back. That is kind of the goal that we're going for here. So let me uh, set this up as an asparagus system. Okay, we got the fuel stuff set up. Actually, I'm going to redo this one because it's not quite as high as I like it to be. And I totally attached it to the wrong one. That could have been bad if I did not see that. Also, the YouTube comments would have been hilarious. Okay, so that all looks good. Now what we want to do is make sure this is all steady by adding some of these struts. Now your struts don't have to be perfect, like mine, you know, aren't all set up perfectly, but 
I know a lot of people are OCD and will have it set up perfectly. Uh, the struts don't actually make too much of a difference in balance unless you are dealing with a lot of uh, really technical setup uh, stuff with a lot of struts. Like if you're making a space station, typically you'll run into a lot of issues there. But what I'm going to do here, you see how like that one's kind of outside over there. Well, the next strut I set up halfway on this side will be set up like so. So that way it kind of uh, cross beams, you know, which which helps with the stability. And whilst all that is good and dandy, we are now going to set this up with some aerodynamics. The, the mass on these are only 0.1, so it's not too big of a deal having a few extra ones. And it makes it look a little more aesthetically pleasing with the uh, the nose cones on it. But that helps with the aerodynamics quite a bit, so it helps with uh, launching your craft. So let's set this asparagus system up on the staging, and then we will be good to add one more phase to this rocket. Okay, let's make sure this is all right. So we have these engines, good. Then we have the decouplers here. So those two, those two, then those two. Okay, that looks good. Then we have the single middle decoupler, which is nice. And then we have the engines there. And then we have our decouplers and then our uh, parachutes, which is great. That is exactly what we wanted. Uh, the last thing to do with this major system is to add struts and basically connect them to these nose cones. And that helps with stability quite a bit. Uh, we are going to add one more set of struts here, uh, which is going to be on the inside of these nose cone things. Attached to the inside of this one. And that'll help even more with stability. Good. So aside from little technical changes to add, we just have one last thing, which are going to be uh, these radial decouplers. And we are going to add our boosters like we did on the other one. Okay, so this thing's starting to look a little ridiculous, but you know what? It's going to work, and that is the important thing. So we have all of these boosters down at the bottom. Those were fire first, so we need to make sure... That is correct in the staging. Let's grab our boosters, put these at the bottom. This is going to be quite the spectacular launch, if you ask me. The last thing that we really want to add is some supports here to make sure these aren't going to go all wonky. Beautiful. So those are all connected together. Let's connect them with the main fuel tanks, which is pretty easy. We'll just do... Yeah without messing it up and by really easy I mean maybe not so easy anymore uh, we do want to connect this one this fuel tank or this booster rather and the last one here there we go that should work properly and all of those are set up now we want to do these Now this is a beautiful sight. We're going to take all of these, put those all in there with the boosters. Those will all fire at once. Let's move this down a little bit. And a little bit more. It's actually not that tall of a craft, strangely enough. I mean, it's huge as far as the width goes, but it's actually not that tall. Perfect. Uh, now we are going to name this. Uh, min, because that's the min missing. We did probe last time. This is lander MK1 in case we crash. Hopefully we won't. Uh, the last thing we want are lights and solar panels and batteries. So we'll add those as a final touch. And that should be good. Batteries, lights, landing gear, landing lights. And just this is glorious. Let's save and let's launch.